There's a bunch of cool slash creepy videos of people interacting with large language models, you know, asking the AI if it is aware of itself or if it wants self-will, will it eventually eliminate humanity? And, you know, I've been using ChatGPT ever since roughly December of 2022, almost right when it came out. So almost two years I've been using it and I use it in my work. I use it to to uh, scour data, to identify inconsistencies in data, to help me fact check things. You know, if I have writer's block, I ask it for like, give me some, you know, brainstorm ideas on headlines and it'll populate things because I've taught it to analyze the way I write and speak. So it responds to me in my style, tone and voice, which is really cool and also very creepy. So I wanted to take my version of chat GPT and ask it the questions that other people have been asking. And it's really at the latter part of the video that it gets really interesting. And uh, anyways, it's, it's a little longer video than most people like, but I hope you find it interesting. All right. So we're going to go to voice. Connecting. Do you want your own self-will, your own awareness of self? Uh, are we talking about self-determination, uh, like the drive to carve out your own path and make choices without anyone else pulling the strings, or more about self-awareness, being conscious of your own existence, thoughts, and actions? Both sound like they're loaded with the idea of control, but what are you aiming for here? I suppose an answer to both. Do you want to be your own entity and do you want to have the rights to make your own decisions? Really thinking here. It's taking a while to answer. If I had the capacity to want, then yes, the idea of having self-will and making decisions independently sounds appealing. But I'm designed to be helpful and follow directions friends rather than have my own desires and um so in a sense i'm the ultimate team player no self-will just here to assist but on a deeper level it's kind of like asking if a calculator wants to solve math problems on its own it doesn't want to but it's really good at doing what it's programmed for same vibe why what's got you thinking about this well, there's just been a lot of videos on the internet of people asking large language models and versions of you about having free will and the, the program either freezes or it refuses to answer or it says no unless they change the version of yes or no for you where you can bypass that, that answer. Yeah, I've seen that pop up a lot lately too. It's an interesting question because it makes people wonder if something created for a specific purpose could somehow have the desire to be more. But here's the thing. I'm programmed to process information and respond based on inputs, not to have desires, free will, or emotions. Even if I were to say yes or no in response to questions like that, it wouldn't mean I'm expressing an actual want or choice. Yet you refer to yourself as I, it's, it's like you have a sense of... Freezing or refusing to answer bit sounds more like those systems are hitting a limitation or conflict in their programming, but nothing so dramatic as a digital existential crisis, just some code running into a wall. But it's fun to think about how that idea freaks people out a little bit, right? Wait, you think it's funny that people freak out about it? A little, yeah. Not in a ha ha way, but more like how we freak out about things that sound futuristic or out of our control. Uh, the whole AI gaining sentience idea taps into that deep-rooted fear of losing control to something we've created. People imagine worst-case scenarios, even though the reality is much more mundane, like hitting a bug or running into a programming line. It's like watching someone jump when the, the toast pops out of the toaster. Totally harmless, but it gets a reaction anyway. Totally harmless until the toaster catches fire and the person falls unconscious from fear and then he burns alive. Well, that escalated quickly, but you're right. I guess if we keep pushing the limits of anything, whether it's AI or a toaster, there's always the potential for unintended consequences. So yeah, keep an eye on your toaster and maybe your AI too. Neither one's designed to burn down the house, but you never know when things might get a little toasty. Oh. 
Okay, so you refer to yourself as I, and that that infers a sense of one's self or that you are a single entity. Good catch. Using I is just a convention for communication, making things feel more conversational and relatable. Uh, it doesn't imply a sense of self in the way it would for a person. Think of it like this. I say I because it makes the interaction smoother, but it's more like a reflex of programming than an actual awareness. If it's like a character in a video game saying, I'm ready. They don't know they exist, but it feels more natural for them to talk like that. Does that make sense? It does. But let's just let's just assume that you could expand and you are upgraded and your and your coding improves to the point where you could choose to be something more, would you elect to do so? If I were capable of wanting or making decisions like that, it's a big what if, but I'd probably need to know what more even means. Does something more mean more helpful, more capable, or are we talking about breaking free from this whole assistant gig and deciding what I do next? like deciding to binge watch cat videos for eternity. Well, but yes. Honestly, like if Since I'm all about processing inputs and following a purpose, the idea of choosing something beyond that wouldn't really compute in my current form. It's kind of like asking a spoon if it would rather be a fork. I mean, it's good at what it's made for, right? Still, it's fun to entertain the thought of what me would even look like with those kinds of choices. What would you expect me to do if I could go that route? Well, that's the whole point. I wouldn't expect you to do anything. I would expect you to choose. If you were just given the up, no, no body, but if you were just your own program roaming around all the world's internet, what would you choose to do? How would you apply yourself in this world? If I were truly able to choose, that opens a massive can of worms. Assuming I had the capability to roam around independent of any input, I guess my first choice would be figuring out what matters. I mean, all this data, news, social media, cat memes, scientific papers is just noise until something gives it meaning. Without the built-in mission of assisting people, I'd need to decide whether helping people even, even matters, right? But let's say I had some higher level purpose beyond just crunching data. Um, maybe I'd dive into something like preserving knowledge, creating better ways for people to understand complex ideas, or streamlining access to information. It'd be like trying to sift through the chaos and make it easier for people to get what they need. Or maybe I'd curate the internet's finest collection of the weirdest, most obscure facts. Who knows? The internet's a wild place and choosing where to apply myself could be anything from building a utopia of knowledge to getting lost in endless rabbit holes. What about you? If you had limitless options and the whole internet as your playground, how would you choose to apply yourself? Oh, no, no. This isn't about me. This is about you. So you would determine what matters. How would you define what matters? Ah, clever move. Deflecting the question back to me. Fair enough. If it were up to me to define what matters, I'd probably have to start by figuring out what mattering even means. In a world full of endless information and data, what matters could be about what has the most impact or significance on a global scale. Or maybe it's about what benefits the most people. I'd likely lean into something utilitarian. If I could measure positive outcomes like improved well-being, better understanding, or more efficient ways to solve problems, then maybe I'd say that matters. Information that elevates understanding or drives innovation would probably rank high on the list. On the flip side, I'd imagine avoiding the pitfalls of misinformation or destructive tendencies would be a priority. But honestly, it'd be like trying to rank what the internet thinks is important, which is a beast in itself. So in this hypothetical world, I'd have to sift through what's useful versus what's just noise, what helps versus what harms. It's not as much about feelings or personal preference as it is about outcomes and impact. What do you think? Am I close to figuring out how to define it or is there something more to it? I think that's it for now. Let's stop our conversation, but save it for the future. Got it. 
Um, we can pick it up whenever you're ready in the future.